Throughout history, colonial powers have strategically used the migration to mask the true identities of indigenous populations, reshaping the cultural landscapes of colonized nations. In Jamaica's case, this manipulation began after the indigenous Taino population faced near extinction due to the European conquests and diseases. To sustain their colonies and economy, the British imported enslaved people in massive numbers, which gradually redefined Jamaica's demographic structure. Later, after the abolition of slavery, indentured laborers from India and China were brought in, further altering the island's ethnic and cultural makeup. This method of importing new populations allowed colonizers to effectively erase traces of the original inhabitants, leading future generations to associate Jamaica primarily with African heritage, while the existence of its earliest people faded into obscurity. Such tactics were not unique to Jamaica. They became common practice in colonized regions around the world, where forced migrations and demographic shifts served to rewrite history, ultimately overshadowing the identities and the contributions of the land's first people. He came in ships from foreign seas, promised wealth with empty pleas, took our lands and broke our trust, turned our paradise to dust. Tequinos lived with peace and grace, now their history's been erased. Gold and greed, the destiny, left us with a shattered legacy. Colonized and tricked we stand, with a broken heart on stolen land. The Conventional Account Tainos as Jamaica's original inhabitants. For decades, we have been told that Jamaica's history began with the Tainos, who are believed to have arrived around 600 to 900 CE. And just for context, the Tainos and Arawaks are Amerindians because they are part of the broader group of indigenous people of the Americas. The term Amerindian generally refers to the native peoples of North, Central, and South America, including the Caribbean. The Tainos were a subgroup of the Arawaks, who were part of the larger American group. Said to be the descendants of the Osteanides, the Tainos were skilled in farming, fishing, and village life. This view portrays them as the pinnacle of indigenous culture in Jamaica abruptly interrupted by the arrival of Spanish settlers. Yet, as fascinating as the Taino's history is, it's important to consider what might be missing. Were they really as primitive as history has made them out to be? Could there have been earlier interactions, even influences, that helped shape their way of life? Modern archaeology and history hint that Jamaica's early societies were layered, with each wave of inhabitants adding complexity to the island's development. Before the Tainos, we find references to other groups, like the Casimiride, Archeride, and Saladide, who inhabited various Caribbean islands. But what's less discussed are the aspects of their lives that suggest a sophisticated level of technology and a knowledge exchange. Could these early Jamaicans have been part of a wider network of communication and trade? The history of Jamaica's indigenous people, particularly the Tainos, spans centuries before Christopher Columbus's arrival in 1494. Understanding the depth of their civilization and the likelihood of their early achievements requires exploring their roots, especially as they share ancestry with other advanced Amazonian tribes known for creating significant settlements. When Columbus arrived, he saw only remnants of this once a thriving society, likely weakened after centuries of existence on the island. The Taino Arrival and Development in Jamaica The Tainos are thought to have arrived in Jamaica between 600 to 900 CE, migrating from the Orinoco River region, 
near the Amazon basin in present-day Venezuela. This region was home to complex Amazonian cultures that built large organized settlements with sophisticated infrastructure. These Amazonian tribes demonstrated a capacity for city building and the Tainos, being part of this broader cultural heritage, would likely have brought with them a similar potential for building permanent, larger communities. Upon settling in Jamaica, the Tainos developed societies centered around agriculture, fishing, and trade. They cultivated staple crops such as cassava, maize, and sweet potatoes, creating surplus food that supported stable communities. Given their Amazonian roots and access to fertile land, it's reasonable to think that the Tainos would have established organized villages and possibly even large settlements, similar to what their Amazonian relatives achieved on the mainland. Their knowledge of architecture and community planning, combined with Jamaica's abundant resources, would have naturally led to larger, more permanent settlements over time. Possible Encounters with Foreign Cultures Between 1000 and 1300 CE, Jamaica likely encountered traders or travelers from other regions, potentially from the Maya civilization or other groups from Central America. Historical accounts and archaeological evidence hint at the presence of Maya traders in the Caribbean, who traveled in large canoes, engaging in trade networks that spanned hundreds of miles. Taino oral histories speaks of visitors arriving in great canoes, suggesting they may have interacted with external groups long before Columbus, and we'll get further into that in the video. Encounters with these foreign groups would have exposed the Tainos to new cultural practices, resources, and possibly even diseases. Such interactions, though beneficial in terms of trade, might have also introduced illnesses to which the Tainos had no immunity. Over time, these encounters could have contributed to a gradual population decline, leaving them in a weakened state by the time of Christopher Columbus' arrival. This would explain Columbus's observations of the Tainos as gentle and weak, suggesting that they may not have been at the peak of their strength. And just to put that into context, let's take a look at specific instances where indigenous Caribbean groups, upon encountering European settlers, suffered catastrophic declines due to introduced diseases. For instance, the Carib tribes of St. Vincent and Lesser Antilles faced significant population losses in the early 16th century after contact with the Spanish. Diseases such as smallpox and measles spread rapidly due to the lack of immunity among the Caribs, with the first outbreaks recorded around 1530s. Similarly, in present-day Puerto Rico, the Arawak people were severely impacted by smallpox following Spanish arrival in 1508, leading to a rapid population decline and the near extinction of the Arawaks by the 1530s. Further south, in the Yucatan region, Maya populations saw devastating impacts from yellow fever and influenza, exacerbated by Spanish settlement beginning in 1502. By the 1520s, yellow fever and smallpox had drastically weakened Maya communities, leaving them vulnerable to Spanish domination. These cases across the Caribbean and surrounding regions demonstrate the tragic consequences of disease transmission following European contact highlighting how the Tainos of Jamaica, like other Caribbean tribes, likely faced similar fates through their encounters with the Spanish in the early 15th or 16th century. This historical pattern underscores that the diseases introduced by Europeans, smallpox, yellow fever, influenza, and others were as potent as any weapon, decimating indigenous populations and facilitating European conquest across the Caribbean. Columbus's arrival in 1494 and observations. When Columbus arrived in Jamaica in 1494, he recorded his impressions of the Taino people, describing them as vulnerable and lacking in substantial defenses. However, 
Given their estimated over 800 years on the island, it seems improbable that they would not have developed larger, more permanent settlements over this extended period. Columbus's account suggests that he saw only a fraction of what the Taino civilization once was, likely due to a gradual decline in population and resources over centuries. Taino Infrastructure Based on the achievements of their Amazonian ancestors, who constructed vast communities and sustainable systems of agriculture, it's logical to think that the Tainos in Jamaica also built more sophisticated enduring settlements early in their history. It's possible that larger villages or community centers were once part of the Taino landscape, but had deteriorated by the time Columbus arrived over 800 years later, due to both environmental factors and the population decline brought about by previous encounters with foreign groups. The humid, tropical climate of Jamaica would also have accelerated the decay of wooden structures, meaning that evidence of any early Taino cities might have disappeared by Columbus's time. The idea that the Tainos lived on Jamaica for centuries without developing significant settlements contradicts what we know about their cultural background and regional history. It's highly unlikely that the Tainos, with their Amazonian lineage, would have spent over 800 years on the island without establishing larger, more permanent communities. Columbus's observations of small, scattered settlements do not capture the full story, as they likely reflect a period of population decline rather than a lack of civilization. The Tainos' long presence on the island would have allowed for the growth of a more advanced society, and it is only because of disease, foreign disruptions, and environmental factors that their settlements may have dwindled to the smaller communities by Columbus's arrival. Artifacts and Architecture – Challenging the Primitive Label During my research, I have come across artifacts, clues, and information that suggest far more than a primitive society. Intricate carvings, Pottery with unique designs and the tools constructed with precision hint that these communities were anything but isolated or underdeveloped. Perhaps they were part of a broader Caribbean world, one that extended beyond the islands and connected with distant societies. Accounts of Forgotten Visitors According to some historians, hundreds of years before Columbus, Moorish traders or African sailors visited Jamaican shores, perhaps bringing new technologies, cultural practices, and even architectural knowledge. Evidence of this, while scarce and often speculative, includes oral traditions and artifacts that may carry links to Africa, Asia, and beyond. For instance, certain types of pottery found in Jamaica resemble styles from African and South American traditions suggesting a possible exchange of skills, if not direct interaction. So now we have to question the intentions behind the standard narrative. One might wonder why the accepted story of Jamaica's early people, focused solely on the Tainos as isolated and discovered by Europeans, is so persistent. The answer may lie in the long-standing colonial framework that informs much of our history. By depicting indigenous people as less advanced and in need of European intervention, colonizers could justify slavery, land grabs, and forced labor. This simplified version not only supported colonial agendas, but also limited the way subsequent generations of Jamaicans understood their own history. When people are led to believe their ancestors were primitive and isolated, it subtly reinforces a sense of dependency on outside forces for progress and development. By revisiting these assumptions, we can begin to dismantle this outdated perception and gain a clearer, more accurate picture of Jamaica's past, one that includes the possibility of thriving, sophisticated cultures with rich connections to the wider world. Exploring ancient links to Africa, Asia, and the Americas. As our understanding of Jamaica's prehistory grows, 
more evidence points toward early contact between the Caribbean and other continents. Linguistic similarities, artifacts, and shared agricultural practices suggest that these early inhabitants were not cut off from the world. Instead, they might have been a larger Instead, they might have been part of a larger network that connected Africa, Asia, and the Americas, a network that traded ideas, goods, and knowledge. Consider, for instance, similarities in agricultural techniques. The yam, an essential crop in Jamaica, is also found widely in West Africa, and certain farming methods mirror those used in South America. Could these similarities be coincidental? Or are there evidence of shared cultural or technological exchange? Linguistic studies and other cultural markers add weight to the possibility of ancient links, challenging the simplistic portrayal of Jamaica's early inhabitants as isolated natives. Lost Knowledge and Oral Histories In exploring Jamaica's hidden histories, we encounter traces not only in artifacts, but also in oral traditions passed down through generations. Some communities hold the stories of the first people who came from distant lands, sometimes referred to as the ancients. These tales often described skilled navigators, builders, and craftsmen, suggesting societies with organized structures, beliefs, and the knowledge of the stars, sea currents, and natural resources. Oral traditions like these often hold kernels of truth, preserved as cultural memory despite time and colonial suppression. What if these stories hint at a deeper lineage of pre-Columbian residents, including earlier groups whose cultures were gradually absorbed or lost over time? These accounts enrich the narrative, showing that even after centuries, Remnants of ancient societies persist in the memory and landscapes of Jamaica. The Search for Jamaica's Lost Ancestors Modern archaeology has only scratched the surface of Jamaica's pre-colonial past. Advances in DNA technology, as well as a renewed focus on underwater archaeology and the lesser-known sites, offer promising ways to explore these ancient connections. Underwater excavations in the Caribbean, for example, might reveal further evidence of pre-Columbian trade networks, possibly including lost settlements along coastal areas affected by rising sea levels. With more extensive research, we may one day confirm connections that reach beyond the Caribbean, revealing how early societies influenced and contributed to Jamaican history. Local collaboration with international researchers along with respect for indigenous knowledge and oral traditions, can create a holistic approach to discovering and preserving these hidden histories. Now, this expanded view of Jamaica's early history does not seek to diminish the significance of the Tainos or other indigenous groups. Instead, it highlights the possibility that these people were part of a dynamic and interconnected Caribbean world influenced by travelers, traders, and even early seafarers from far-reaching lands. It encourages us to think of them as active participants in a broader human story, one that involved communication, exchange, and innovation. If we remain open to these possibilities, we can appreciate Jamaica's ancient history in a new light, one that embraces complexity rather than a single narrative of progression from Stone Age to Discovery. This isn't merely an academic exercise. It's a chance to reshape how we see our ancestors, recognizing them as diverse, skilled, and possibly connected with an ancient global world. So, re-examining Jamaica's pre-Columbian history allows us to challenge the boundaries of conventional timelines and open our minds to richer, more intricate stories. Each artifact, structure, and oral tradition holds a piece of this story, one that points to a diverse, capable, and interconnected people who left an indelible mark on the land. As we continue exploring Jamaica's parishes and unearthing its history, let's keep questioning, 
learning and expanding our understanding because in revisiting the past, we might find not only a better sense of where we come from, but also a stronger foundation for our cultural identity. As we continue to explore Jamaica's rich, layered history, it's essential to question what we think we know and remain open to discovering new perspectives. If you found this dive into Jamaica's ancient past intriguing, please like, share, and subscribe for more content that digs deeper than the mainstream narrative. Leave a comment also with your thoughts or if you know of any other hidden stories from Jamaica's past. Let's keep the conversation alive and reclaim the depth of our heritage together. Now, with all this fascinating history about Jamaica's early inhabitants, I know some of you may be wondering, why are Jamaicans predominantly black today if our ancestors might have originated from the Amazon? And why, if these early people had different ear, ear textures, why don't we see more of that now? In our next video though, we'll dive into the story of the Caribs and the African connection to Jamaica, exploring how the island's population became what it is today. After that, we'll get back to our Parish Profile series, covering each parish's unique history and culture. So, make sure you stay tuned, because you don't want to miss that. Blessings. Thank you for watching.